This is Cat Love with Cat's Two Cents with our first Church of Love service. This is God's Online Church of Love. Father, we ask you right now, Lord, you would bless this, you would anoint it, you would let us hear your heart, you would move on me, Lord, to bring your word, not mine. In the name of Jesus, I pray, I bless, I pray, I glorify your holy name. I love you, Lord. I glorify you. I thank you. And I pray, Lord, that people's hearts will be blessed in this service through this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, you guys. Now, uh, can you see me? Am I on the big screen or the, or the side screen? Okay. 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 Now I want everybody to mute their mics while I bring the message. How you doing? We're gonna mute our mics while we while I bring the message, and then after I'll tell you. Okay, unmute your mic because we're gonna talk together. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So everybody mute your mic, and we're gonna start the service. I want you to turn to Luke chapter five. No, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. <laughs> Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, I want to share something with you. I want you to turn back with me to Isaiah 61, which is what he read from. And there are slight variations, but the, the, the uh, title of this message is Comforting Those That Mourn. Sometimes we don't realize how deeply involved God is with the things that matter the most to us. Because there are people in our families and our circles that tell us, look, we don't want to hear all that. You ought to grow up, get over it. But you know what? Some things we can't get over without God. It's just impossible. But when God heals it, it's all over. All right. We're going to start reading Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Mm, mm, mm. These carry so much weight. I'm going to go through it in a minute. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, verse 3, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, mm, mm, mm. for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus is saying that this is his calling. This is what he's all about. He did not just come to save us from sin. He did not just come to stop us from going to hell. It doesn't stop there. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, guess what? It has just begun for us. His job was done, but he is still doing the work in us. Because what happens in us is progressive. It's ongoing. 
It gets better and better from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You get me on that? So when I'm going to go back now because I want you to, to uh, this, uh, decipher this with me. When he has anointed Jesus to preach the gospel, in the New Testament it says to the poor. In the Old Testament it says to the meek. Those who are unassuming, the nobodies of society, the broken, the people that are dysfunctional, the ones that have the can't help it, the ones that nobody else gets. But God. All right, listen to this. He is he said to bind up the broken heart. How many has been hurt, has been broken from things other people did to us or didn't do that they should have done? How many of us are damaged and we feel like the damage is permanent? I am here to tell you it is not. According to these scriptures, it is not permanent. Listen. He has proclaimed liberty to the captives. You know how many people feel caught up? They're, they're caught up. They feel like they're trapped. There's no way out. Yes, there is. God always has a way of escape. Always. Listen. Now, whether you take that escape route is up to you. But he has a way of escape. When it says the opening of the prison to them that are bound, you know how many people out there are bound? There's a thing called the strong man. That's a demonic stronghold. And people are bound to habit. They're bound to people. And bound to drugs. They are bound to their hatred. They're bound to their bitterness. They're bound and they, they're so hurt and they're so disillusioned by life that they have taken some of the worst choices in their lives and gotten caught up in it. And then now they can't find their way out. And it looks like the thing that they grabbed the hold to is pulling them down, down, down into what I call a pit of disillusionment, a pit of despair, a pit of hopelessness, a pit of depression, a pit a failure. And it seems like it never, never, ever ends. It seems like it's an abyss. Ad infinitum. It's just endless, infinite. Now, what God did though, when he sent Jesus to die on the cross, he took our damage with him. He took our hurts with him. All those stripes, you know the scripture that says, by his stripes, we are healed? Well, guess what? That doesn't just mean, oh, God took away my headache, oh, I'm healed from cancer, oh, God. No, it doesn't stop there at the body. Jesus works internally as well. And every bit of damage, every bit of brokenness, every bit of hurt, every bit of harm, that's been done to you. I am telling you the God's honest truth. It is all, it is all possible to, to experience your healing. When you are being healed, when God gets in there, he doesn't come and just do it. He waits for you to invite him in. Okay, let me share this real quick. You know how Somebody knocks on your door. Imagine Jesus knocking on your door. Now, your living room is great. Your hallway is great. Even your bathroom's okay. But you ain't letting them in your bedroom. And don't dare go in that closet. That's the way we do company, right? Why? Because we get embarrassed. But guess what? Guess what Jesus came to do? This, this gets me every time I think about it. Jesus came to go to the dirty part of your house. He came to go into that closet where all the skeletons are rattling. All your shame is. That's what he came to. He didn't come to sit in your pretty living room. He said, I didn't come for those who are healthy. I came for those who are sick. So 
He comes to the filth. He comes to your dirt. He comes to all of that. He comes to help you. Everyone who's got your mic on, please turn it off. And then we'll turn it on when I say after the after the, uh, the message. So listen, when you are somebody's got their mic on, please turn it off. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's me. Okay, turn it turn it off, and we'll talk after. Thank you for coming. Now listen, you guys, you have Jesus coming in your front door, right? You don't let him in that basement. You got cobwebs, you got rats, who knows what's down in there. That's what Jesus wants to come and go down to. He wants to get into the cesspool of your soul. Let me tell you this story. I have a friend who had a stopped up toilet and her husband worked for, for construction and they did not have the money for a plumber. This thing speaks volumes of God's love to me. Their pastor felt led to go by their house after church service. He goes by still wearing his Sunday clothes, his Sunday suit. Now listen to this. She cracks the door. Oh, hi, pastor. Talking to him. He's outside the door. She's inside the door. All right? And he says, God told me to come by your house. So guess what happened? Sitting there, <laughs> this is so funny. She's embarrassed. She doesn't want him coming in the house because all the bleach in the world can't totally get rid of that smell. You know what I'm talking about. He asked her to let him come in. Okay, now she lets him in hesitantly and keeps him in the living room. And they talk a few minutes and he says, I need to, I need to go down the hall. And she's like, no, you know how we pat it, no, 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 you don't want to go there, trust me. So he marches in there. He opens the bathroom door, lifts up the seat rolls up his shirt. Now, picture this as God going into our mess. Rolls up his sleeves, puts his bare hand down in the depths of the family spoils that has been there for a couple of hours a day. And you know what I'm talking about, what can accumulate in the toilet in a day or two. He runs his hand all the way down in that mess doesn't even hold his nose. And he reaches deep as far as he can, finds the blockage, frees it up, and away goes troubles down the drain. And of course, he does his cleaning or whatever he's got to do. That's what God does. Who would expect a man of the cloth, so to speak, a man of God, to go and filthy himself in another family's mess? His own family, yes, yeah, maybe, maybe. But not somebody else's. But God told him to go to her house because God knew he would solve the problem because he had that kind of heart. Now if a human being has that kind of heart, how much more does Jesus? You don't have to live with your sex pool anymore. You don't have to stay stopped up, plugged up, tied up, and, and, and messed up. From the floor, as they say, tore up from the floor. You don't have to stay that way. I can tell you from experience, I was tore up from the floor, up, inside, out, everywhere. I was messed up. But I'm telling you from experience and from the Word, Jesus, those stripes he wore on his back, that those people inflicted on him, every one of those stripes said, I'll take your hurt. I'll take your burdens. I'll take your shame. I'll take your wounds. I'll take your bruises. I'll take your broken heart. I'll take your embarrassment. I'll take your fears. I'll take your hurts. 
I take your anger. I take your rage. I mean, no matter what it is, it's there for the taking. Because he wants to go in where your filth is, where your dysfunction is, and unplug the blockage. That's why we have to draw close to God, especially when we're at the bottom of our barrel, when we're at the bottom of our game. That's why we have to ask God to help us. When the Bible says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord that he may lift you up, guess what? He will lift us up. But we have to humble ourselves and say, God, I need help. I'm a mess. Listen. Uh, Rashad, I want you to, if you can, if you can't, it's okay. But if you can, I want you to turn on your mic and I want you to sing a song. And then I'm going to get back into the message. 